Okay, it says that I'm live, but I'm not quite sure if you can see me. Hello, hello. Um, my audio seems okay. I'm, I'm going to actually bump it up a little bit just so that way I can hear myself a little bit better. Um, okay, that works. Cool. So I'm going to mute myself now. Yeah, okay. Well, that works. So what I'm doing tonight actually is um, I am 3D scanning all of the sculptures that I did back in March and April. Um, good evening, everybody. It's, it's Saturday night, and I'm using 3DF Zephyr. Uh, the first piece that I did actually, which was earlier, was I did all the masks for uh, this fella here who's... Um, who's really like, you know, terrified. He's being, uh, he's being kind of taken by this uh, Oni monster that I had sculpted for this project for um, this competition rather for um, for uh, Universal Studios um, Universal Monsters had a competition. So the thing is that I am working on. I'm working on several projects at once and trying to finish them. And the other night, um, I actually got some really good advice from my girlfriend who suggested that I make a list of all the things that I'm trying to get done all at once. And this project, which I believe had four sculptures, uh, three humans and uh, this this Oni demon that, you know, that I, I processed these first and then also the first contact Proco Challenge um, sculpture that I did, which is another three-piece um, sculpture, three three um, figure sculpture, that I process all those too. So I'm just trying to right now digitize them um, because I ran out of room. We recently moved, um, so you know really. Uh, you know, when, once you put new shelves up and stuff, you realize how much space all of your physical sculptures are taking up. So um, it makes sense to sort of get all these together before I, I continue with the next project of mine, which uh, you can see on my Instagram. The first two sculptures are done, um, and that is a, a Christmas Santa Village character sculpture because I feel like a lot of people get Santa Village um, houses for display around Christmas time. And uh, there's very rarely um, many characters that go in uh, in those Santa villages, and I feel like they're all pretty. Whatever, whatever you do see is very basic. It's like a man chopping down a tree or some carolers, and that's kind of it. And what I kind of imagine is more like you know some mythical and fantastical characters, and you know some Harry Potter esque Hogsmeade type characters. Some definitely from that Harry Potter universe and then and then just like you know more more than just your elf and Santa Claus and a couple of car carolers so that's gonna be something I'm working on the next few months but before I do that I will kick myself if I don't finish uh, these last few projects so um, with that I actually took all these pictures beforehand I have like 500 pictures and I've, I've gotten through the first 200 of them before I started streaming and admittedly this is the first time I've plugged in my blue yeti camera in uh like my blue yeti my blue yeti microphone rather in uh goodness well over a year or two so with that i'm actually moving on to the masking phase so you have all these pictures um you have all these pictures in a roundabout right so um so for instance i have this this woman shooting a bow and arrow and i have all these turntable um, pictures here and what I'm doing is I'm, I'm masking each one so you know I'm just trying to sort of relax tonight and and get the next several hundred process sculptures done so hopefully you'll hang out with me I'll check the chat from time to time um, and if you're if you oh there you go Annie I can see and hear you good 
uh, if you're in here still, is the is the audio good? If it's not, let me know, and I will move on to uh, just masking. But I'll, I'll I'll check the chat again in a minute. Okay, so the first mask. Let's let's get it going. So one thing that I've noticed when I start to digitize these sculptures from clay into 3D is that um, little pointy bits like here or the, the bow itself, they're not gonna scan 100% correctly and a lot of times it actually is better if when the scan is finished that I sort of delete them off the figure and, and sculpt them in, in either Sculpt GL or I, I, people use ZBrush but I, I don't because I haven't availed myself to purchase it yet. So I use Sculpt GL because it's a it's a free browser-based solution that, that I can use pretty easily that I've taught myself over the last few years. Um, so I'm using these blue marks to I'm using these blue marks to mask the background. And I purposely use a white background um, and when possible a white piece of paper in order to make the background as uniform as possible because the algorithm in, in um, 3DF Zephyr picks up as much of the background as it can and tries to recognize what your object is, but it doesn't do a perfect job. So I, I try to minimize that. Usually I use a, a key and a fill light, um, which I picked up on Amazon, and then and then just little things like, like a gap in the negative space here. Um, makes sense to mark that off too. Now again, like the the hair ties in her hair, um, you know, are, are, are very likely going to kind of scan terribly. And I, and I may have to put them in digitally, but it does, it really doesn't take a long time. It's, it's better, honestly, sometimes with, with these detailed parts, it's usually pretty much better to go in after the fact and redo them than try to salvage them if they get scanned all wonky, you know, if it, it, straight lines don't come out great. Now see even here, you know, the program doesn't want to take these. It just knows that it's not going to do them well. But again, you know, if it takes them and they're messy, I can delete them and then and then put them back in in a 3D sculpture software. But, um, you know, once this sculpture is finished, what I'm going to do next is likely I will uh, 3D print it along with the other three figures, including the Oni from this piece, painted. Um, and then I, I, I may, I've been toying with the idea and I'm, I'm fairly confident about the idea of sort of listing this on an Etsy account. Um, I think that'll be a fun thing to do because um, I'm getting to a point now where a lot of these sculptures end up as finished prototype model kits where they're painted or unpainted. So that's, that's I think, the next step for me, just in terms of like what I'd like to do is, is be able to bring a little bit of this stuff to market. I mean, if, if I could share it with people, that, that actually gives me more of an opportunity to do more art. So, so I, think that's, I think that's really great. Okay. Let's see if I can tease out getting the rest of that arrow. There, there you go. See the hair tie program doesn't want to pick it up. And it's it's probably going to do a pretty bad idea. So this is what a finished mask looks like here. Um, save, move on to the next one. This piece goes on until right around here. If you can see that. So, you know, with, with this series, I made an effort to um, do the photogrammetry with somewhere around 80 pictures per sculpture. So it's a, it's a lot of work, but it's, it's going to be worth it because um, I, did, I did a lot of, finished a lot of pieces in March and April um, between this project and the first contact alone, that was seven sculptures. And then with the um, the Gnome Mountaineer piece that I had done, 
as a private commission in April that that made um, nine. So, you know, in, in two months I, I had finished nine, but I had only gotten to scan and print two of them. So again, I'm, as you can see, like it, it kind of follows the logic of a lot of artistic um, workflows. Um, you'll see here that I'm working from big to small, so I'm I'm masking the large parts of the background first, and then the small parts of the background, and then really I only need one stroke um, for the algorithm to pick up where the object is. The, the background, it's getting rid of that noise is the hardest part, and you have to be careful because sometimes it'll take a little bit of the base, or what have you. Yeah, that's okay. I try to work that out. Watch it'll it'll then give me. Yeah, it's not gonna not gonna let go of that part, but that's okay. Oh. Okay. So we'll just move on and do a bunch here. I don't really intend on on trying to fill every piece of silence with. chatter but if I think of something that I'm trying to do or forgetting to do I'll mention it like just now I went to the next mask and I was speaking so I forgot that I was trying to work big to small to save some time so that's that's probably all that I need for this one and then we'll, we'll check our work when we mark the figure itself and that's that's perfect I'm trying not to scan the bowstring because I know that that's not going to come out well and that's something that I'm really going to need to work out in the sculpture software. Okay, so again, let's work big to small. I did this in our, our new dining room just because we have a nice overhead lamp fixture. So with that and the two studio lights, I was able to get really good lighting. If you see, there's really, from this perspective, there's no shadow. Um, and that's important. Shadows kind of will mess up the photogrammetry process. Now we'll work the uh, the small negatives. You know, it's it's funny this this process. When you think of it as oh man, it's, it's hundreds of photos. It can be tedious. And then at the same time, when you just sort of relax into it, it's 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 kind of really stressless you know there's there's sort of a there's sort of just boxes to put things in and the decisions are not creative ones so um, in a certain sense it does become autopilot I will be doing this for a while see right there this is where it gets tricky this is exactly where we were two strokes ago. So the algorithm doesn't want to pick this up. It wants that bit of bowstring scanned. So if I erase these last two brush marks, you'll see that um, we're going to see the exact same mask here. So it actually is slightly different. It gives you a slight negative here. So I'll actually leave them in. But that's something to watch out for because you know, in, in trying to be perfect with this part of the process, which you should be really careful with, um, you know, it, it could get away from you a little bit. The perfectionism here, um, it has its limits because at the end of the day, this, especially if you have 
a figure you're scanning or a sculpture that has small parts, even fingers, anything on that level. Um, forget like costumes or, or items like a, the bow or the arrow. They are not going to come out right. They, those are going to have to be redone in... They're going to have to be redone in a, in a 3D sculpting software. In fact, one thing that is worth showing you is that um, one thing worth showing you is that the first time I realized this, I had to, yeah, so right here, you'll see that with this sculpture right here, I, I had intended to do it, if it'll open, um, I had intended to do it, it has a sword and a shield, and the scan itself had come out okay. But if you look here, you see that, that texture there? You know, that's really low fidelity. This was when I sculpted that sword in uh, traditionally, it was, a, it was actually, <laughs> it was made of wood and it was a piece of a coffee stirrer. And what happened was, the way that 3DF Zephyr saw it, it, it gave a, a lot of noise. You can see that on the surface area. It curved and all kinds of stuff. Now, I think I completed this back in 2017 or 2018. And everything else, like I didn't touch this in a sculpture software. This was just, I took probably 120 pictures. It was pre-painted, which gave a lot more information to, um, to, the, to the software. So like, a lot of the armor details came through, albeit a little bit too noisy. Like the, these surfaces, if I could have, I would smooth them out. But like you could see the fingers here are still pretty well placed. And when I printed it out small, a 28 millimeter size, it was, it was more than fine. You know, p people get a little carried away when they make miniatures for D&D uh, for &D and stuff in terms of making sure that their fidelity is, is super high. Like, um, you know, the, the, the texture here on the on the chest piece and the texture here on the shielding, like those lines on the shield, those wood lines, those come through, but the bumpiness there won't. But the sword bumpiness, that, that texture did come through and that was a real problem. So I had found that if you go to uh, Sculpt GL, um, it's like, ZBrush just ripped right out onto your web browser. So, so for me, that was really uh, super well worth it to start getting to use and, and learn and stuff. And, and over time, like I've, I've taken free um, texture packs that exist online and, and incorporated those and, and all kinds of stuff. So, um, you know, it's, it's funny once you kind of put the work in, eventually those, those things that you're frustrated with, they, they, they get a little easier. They get a lot easier, actually. That's why practice is so important. Um, to be able to accomplish the things you want to illustrate and see done. Okay, so this, this mess came pretty easily. See, we're not getting those and I'm not going to fight for them because I know they'll have to go in eventually later on anyway. And, and you know, it's funny. Lately, I've I've been approaching. I've been approaching. Um, my clay masters. Sketch like in a way like it's not the final design. Like I may look at this in a 3D sculpture software and decide that that I want more detail in the kimono, that maybe I want to include here a water bottle or or something along that nature. Maybe I don't like her hairstyle. Maybe I want to use a totally different face or change that bow and arrow to something else. Maybe she doesn't even have a bow and arrow. Maybe she's kneeling and pointing. Maybe she's carrying a lantern instead. So um, the one thing that I, I tend not to change once I 3D scan a figure, is the pose. And the reason why I still use the photogrammetry process is I feel like 
an advantage that working in this workflow has over purely digital sculpting is that the sense of gravity here is real. I made a sculpture that balances in the real three-dimensional space of reality. Um, and so the, the proportions are what I chose in terms of physical proportions. The body language works because it does, right? It, it, you, you can actually press the human body that way without using rigging that might ragdoll or something like that. I'm using something more than a T-pose here, which communicates naturalness in life. So that's what I'm looking to at least get um, in, inside the 3D scan. Like if I could get this pose locked in um, with this amount of volume all in one mesh, everything else is gravy. So. This time I'm going small to big. You can really zoom in even on the pixel level like this. This at this point, I'm looking at every pixel in here and then zooming back out. Okay, pretty good, but we want these negative spaces if we can get them. If we can find a way to, oh, that's too big. Oh, but you know what, the mask itself worked. The indicator was too big, but the mask was not, the mask malfunctioned in a way that was helpful. Ah, see there, now I lost part of the sleeve. I'll go in and try to just take it back quick. That works pretty well. That works pretty well. I don't I don't anticipate this edge to work. This is something I'm gonna have to work in the program anyway. So we're getting there. So everything here with an M in parentheses are the masks that we've made. And then this particular bow and arrow um, hunter. Um, these are the pictures that are left, and then that's the last one before we get to the Oni, which is going to be really fun. So I'll talk more about that piece and the concept designing with it and everything else like that. But, um, you know, it is what it is. See that right there, that negative space. I'm not going to try to mess with that. So one area, and this is why I try to keep as much of the object in front of a blank white space or a uniformly colored space as possible is because right here we have three color changes between the wall, a piece of computer paper, and um, this <laughs> pink housing insulation foam that I painted black. Um, that's potentially where the algorithm can get a little messed up. So I'm going to make sure that I mask it specifically and that was too much. Let's see what we get now. Okay, um, we're just missing a bit of the sleeve, so I'll just drop a dot there. Not bad. It's because the mask is touching the elbow. All right, we'll live with that. 
All right, let's work big to small. Let's get these color gradient changes in here. Feels good to be getting this stuff done, man. It's been kind of hanging over my head. And um, for us, um, meaning me and, uh, me and Annie, my girlfriend, with the move and everything else, Keeping, keeping art regular with personal stuff hanging over your head can can be a real challenge. You know, this is not for me. This is not my mode of uh, sustaining myself. This is not my my day job. This is for me passion stuff. So, this is something I I do because I I love to do it. I actually, um, I work a day job as a civil servant. So for me, this is, this is actually the escape. So tonight it was either this or Fortnite, because I'm 12. And I know that, you know, we're going to scrap this bow and arrow. But if the bow scans well, I might keep it and try to clean it up. Or at the very least, um, put a small mesh around it later on. So we're, we're looking pretty good here. Let's do the same thing. Let's, uh, let's hit the smalls first. Now, obviously, these are the big ones. You don't always need to go all the way around, um, especially if you don't have a lot of bits and baubles sort of sticking off of the sculpture. If you have a figure that is very contained in that way, you can just sort of, you can do really a quick pass around if you have a consistent background with good lighting. Um, so, like, that worked. It, it pro probably shouldn't have worked that easy, but that's okay. Like, I'll, I'll show you just... If I'm being sloppy, I'll go in and do the, the small negative portions later, but um, switch to the background mask and just sort of hit the gradient changes and leave it. And then that, hit the, the object, and we're good. That's actually perfect. I'm just going to come in now and hit the background of that negative. Perfect. So right there, we were able to do it with three strokes. And that is the fastest way to move quickly in 3DF Zephyr with the masquerade function, which is great. I mean, 3D scanning software and hardware is crazy expensive still. 3D printing recently got um, much, much cheaper, but 3D scanning is still something that you have to be like a aviation development company sort of be able to afford like the, the cheaper laser 3D scanners are many thousands of dollars. Um, so this time, yeah, just, you know, a few, uh, a few strokes there, come back in with the large brush and yeah, that works. That's good.
Hmm. I'll leave it like that. It's part of the bow anyway, so that's okay. That's something that we're not really going to miss. This is my first stream on YouTube. I have streamed on Twitch before and uh, Instagram a couple of times. And one, one thing is that I, I really don't like the, the performative feeling. You know, th this is a this is an art form that is it's very personal and it's not really about um, it's not really about making it exciting as you're doing it. The end result should be exciting um, and the work itself. So, you know, one thing that I'm I'm trying to sort of stay away from personality-wise while I do this is the uh, the inclination to. Hey guys, that whole thing. You know, if, if you happen to see this and you want to talk about it, even after the fact, that's, that's cool. And if not, that's fine too. Um, so you see here, work the big strokes and the small ones of the voids and the backgrounds of the sculpture and now I'll come in with a foreground stroke unify together that area right there that that negative I'm I'm fine with being filled because it would be natural that cloth w would or could fill that that gap to begin with so that's okay I'm also hoping with um, more than 55 or 70 photos for each piece that the fidelity rate right off the bat is higher with these. Um, I just, I have so many projects going at once that I, I know that I may not have the time necessarily to commit a lot of 3D sculpting, editing time for each individual piece, especially like this particular character is not the focal point of that composition. You know, that, that sculpture um, that four character sculpture of the Oni was, wow, I can't get the stroke right, my mouse is, you know, this, um, wow, was really acting up. This four character sculpture of the Oni, um, the Oni is the focus, and this character here is the secondary focus, but it's still not the main focus, so 
you know, it really makes sense to spend a little more time on the masking than have to go in and really, really re-detail everything when, you know, this, this was a sketch I did not perfectly smooth many of the details uh, on this piece. And that was, um, that was purposeful. You know, I purposely did not render purposely did not render this this side character uh, as much as I could have as a, as a choice um, you know the, the main the main focus what am I going to do here so this is this is the most strokes you probably see me take on a single mask, and it's because this I don't want this to be filled in unnecessarily. So I'll leave the arrows out completely on this this JPEG. But um, you know, like I was saying, the the focus of this piece, and it's it's four four characters at once. The focus is this this beast. You know, she sunk two arrows into him already, and it seems to have just made him mad. That's the whole point. Meanwhile, the, the first character that I scanned, he's being taken by the leg. I separated them all, broke the base up into multiple pieces, but you can tell he's, he's way more rendered and sculpted out and everything else. So I hit all the gradients there as large as I could. Just gonna get a shape in there and hit the gradient changes here too. And the gradient changes there. And then that, oh yeah, that should be good. And then we'll, we'll come back in here to hit these small negative areas. I'll reduce the brush size accordingly. Got a couple of strokes. And then Yep, got it. Do the same thing again. Well We'll actually hit the small voids first. large voids.
we're coming along here. We're coming along. When, when we finish the masks for this piece, we'll circle back by following this piece through the photogrammetry process. I'll give you kind of a walkthrough of it while I do it. There's something aesthetically pleasing to me about all these shapes. You know, it's funny, if I, if I nail a composition of a sculpture, or, I, or if I feel that I do one way that, that I'm able to tell after the fact, is if these lines look kind of pretty on their own when, I, when I'm 3D scanning, it helps me to re-see the silhouette that I created in another light. Now the bow didn't come through here, so let's see if we can get it on our own. Came through. Algorithm just needed a little, little bit of help there. This should work. Everything but, um, well, that's a little wonky, but again, those arrows I'm gonna delete, put in later. Let's see if we could salvage the bow. I'd rather have less bow than too much, so I'm just gonna leave that where it is. Move on. And move on. So when I, when I made this piece, I only needed it from one angle. So I didn't even finish the kimono. There's no material there. And I, it, it didn't matter to me to finish it or even to smooth out this area here. I'll do it for the 3D print and the digitalization, but you know, it just wasn't necessary. And uh, you know, when you don't need a full character's turnaround, you don't need it. And that's a good question always for me to ask myself is, is this character central to what I'm trying to portray? Where in the composition does this character fit? And by that token, how much detail, how much work do I have to put into um, rendering this character? You know, for this character, the second most important character in the scene needs to work from the front, for sure needed more detail than the other characters, and it needed to answer the question of where those arrows that are in that are stuck inside the Oni, where those characters come from. But I didn't need something that was gonna take attention away from the monster. The purpose of this whole piece is to expose um, you know, a scary creature. 
if the purpose, it's funny, conceptually, if it was a sculpture that was about um, the kids from Stranger Things, right? If it was a piece about Stranger Things, the show, and it had all the characters in it, the Demogorgon might be secondary to the cast of kids, depending upon where you want to focus it, you know. But, but for this, these characters weren't meant to be notable by me. These were meant to be throwaway characters, so to speak. They, they were, they're there just to serve a, a purpose and a function. Right there. See, that's insidious, right? Because you could finish this scan, and then you will get a character which has like, what looks like a knife sticking out of her ribs unnecessarily. Take a while to smooth that out or delete it, so. It's 4th of July weekend, so you may hear what sound like gunshots. They are not firecrackers going on.
Okay. Okay, all the areas are covered. We're moving at a pretty fast pace now. Okay, there we go. We're going to increase the brush size here so we don't have to go too crazy. YouTube makes it real easy to stream. Really quite impressed. I, I, I basically needed to push two buttons to get this going, so it's awesome. Remember when I first got started on Twitch, that it was a, uh, it was a process. It was years ago though. Kinda had a feeling that, that this portion of the black base would leak onto the, uh, the figure. Okay, we're moving along. It's like the last 10 or 15 masks to go. And then, yeah, we'll, we'll process this piece tonight on stream. with all these with all these negatives this is such a complicated piece to 3d scan you know what's good to 3d scan is something like you know a simple shape a pear an apple photogrammetry is really good for that and the human body alone honestly I mean, this program especially has a function just for the human body which is Really good, really, really good. Again, we'll go big. And I didn't use a, a fancy camera to take these pictures. I, I just used my Google Pixel and um, put them on a put it on a tripod um, so that the camera was not moving for these perspectives, and then did slight one inch turns on the Lazy Susan where I had this sculpture and took po pictures every, every you know, one inch turn. And then I would drop the camera angle by six inches. So I did that three times. So it's like 20 pictures per camera angle. And that's how, yeah, I might've done three or four perspectives. Maybe it was 25 to get the 75 or so photos. So. Maybe it was more like 30 pictures per, per camera angle. Ugh, that's tough. Okay, let's see. Huh. 
All right, that worked out pretty well. Let's see if we could go in and get it even tighter. It's not bad. I'm fine with that. Hmm. Come on. Okay. Okay. I have a feeling I'm going to have to rework parts of that thumb anyhow. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that should work for this mask here. Good stuff, good stuff. Sometimes you need more strokes than you would prefer, but with little details, they might be necessary. So you put in there what you need, you know. See, that would drive me nuts because I don't want the wrist to get too big. And I'll give up some of the bow in order to get that. That's too big too. Okay, and there, now we'll just swing back around with a large brush. To mask in there. And we're good.
Perfect. That area in there is going to drive me nuts even though I know I'm dry. I'm going to delete those arrows and sculpt them from scratch in digital. Okay. Let's get the large background in there. It's good. I just want to reiterate. Um, separation right in there. Just to cover myself. little bit of separation in here. See what we get. Good. Hitting the small ones first just because our brush was already small, the small background masks. Now we'll loop back around. Get everything else. And there you go. That's it. See these gradient changes here? You know, wallpaper, that wallpaper, and then uh, base. You want to make sure you cover those for sure. Like this, not necessary. You know, it, 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 one dot, it'll know all of this matches and not to pick it up. But then these, these small gradient changes here, too, it, it can confuse the program. So, Makes sense to try as much as possible to sort of give it every indication that it can before you move on. So that way you get your object as close to how it was originally presented. Moving on. This upcoming week, I'm actually taking a vacation to focus on as many of these projects as possible. So I'll be able to actually work on my art stuff nine to five this week. 
which will be really fun. So this weekend I'm trying to knock out as many of these masking, you know, this masking stuff um, for the photogrammetry it takes up a lot of time. And it's not the creative part of the process, it's not the fun part. It's, <laughs> this is the tedium, the necessary tedium, but for me the tedium. So I'm, I'm trying to knock it out of the way. So that way I'm not stuck doing it later when I want to be making something new or painting or, or 3D sculpting, like even that. You know, for me, this is the part that I tend to throw on the back burner for as long as possible. Um, I picked the wrong brush. That should have been the red one. Okay. We're good. One thing that I forget to use all the time, and instead I'll just undo a whole brush stroke, is that if you slip um, and you're you're doing part of your mask, uh, if you slip and get in there, you can just hold down the the right um, the right mouse key, the right click, and you can you can erase part of a mask. And I did it over there just to save the stroke, just because I slipped at the end. And it's something that I, I often forget to do, but it's, it's really, really helpful. Definitely saves the time without having to undo a brush stroke. We're, we're deep within the last 10 for this, so we'll be able to pivot, pivot, and, uh, and finish the photogrammetry for this piece. And then, uh, you know, reassess.
What am I doing? Oh boy. Okay. Whoops. All right, last three masks, so let's finish strong. Small negative, small um, negative space in the background. No other ones, so now this should be fairly easy. Should be just these five brush strokes. And it's not. One more. Okay. I'll definitely take that. No negative spaces. So I'll just try to eliminate the bowstring. Man. Get the gradient in here. Uh, you know, after a while with this, the hand starts to cramp. Um, and then we'll just hit the figure, and that's good. Last one. And then we get to move on to processing, which is a lot more fun. Uh, and, it's, and it's certainly more to show. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We are going to close out of this. We're going to start a new project. We're gonna mask images. And we are going to hit next. And then we're going to come in here and open up all the photos that are of what we just masked. So she starts there. And she ends here. So open all those. Click Next. All of the masks loaded. Now, if I hadn't masked them beforehand, I would launch Masquerade and then do what we were just doing, which was um, to hit all those blue background masks and then the red object brush strokes. Click next here. The calibration is for my pixel, which gets pulled off automatically off the internet. I don't have to do anything there. Click next. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say that this is general. 
and we're going to keep it at default and we'll go from there and we're going to run now while we're running all of the key points for all of the sections of each of these pictures that intersect in terms of the object it's stitching all those together right now it's finding the key points and trying to turn 80 odd pictures of the same object into a three-dimensional point map and then eventually we'll turn that point map into a mesh so this takes a little while um, it's certainly going to take more than a minute and in the meanwhile what we can do is I can actually show you something else that I was working on recently so we will open up sculpt GL here which is free and clear the scene and then we're going to add an object and I will show you a little bit of what I've just been working on recently which is I just finished, I did a Nutcracker sculpture last um, Christmas season, and I actually had just finished 3D sculpting that. So pull that up and maybe we'll fool around with it right now um, while this continues to you know, extract. It's not, it's not gonna be very fun to watch this sort of uh, go on for a while. So this is Bring up my Instagram so you can see. So this I took uh, eighty three or eighty four pictures of and 3D scanned it using the same process that I just showed you on a turntable of photogrammetry and then processed it in Sculpt GL to this. So this to this, this to this. And you can see there are certain design changes. Uh, this sword initially just because it was a placeholder and I didn't want to sculpt a whole sword and I didn't feel that I needed to. This is, um, this is one of those swords that comes in a cocktail drink. I just saved it when I went to a bar one day and I was like, I'll throw that in a sculpture. And so I did. That's what this is. And the bar is just a piece of wire for the, uh, the, for the falchion or the, the rapier. Um, so whatever. I thought that was pretty cool. And then, um, and then what I did was I went in here and you'll see there are all these kinds of details. You know, the button on the hat the eyes and and all those things uh, the mustache I left pretty soft and the um, the fluffiness of the the fluffy Cossack hat um, you know again for for what I intend to do with this oh so this sword ended up getting changed I just I I put a 3d cube in here and I stretched it to its proportions and that's gonna be the sword and I'm, I'm perfectly happy with that. You know, that's going to be great. And the thing is, um, this piece, when it's finished, and you got to keep in mind what you're doing, this, this will be about 40 millimeters tall, somewhere in that range. You know, it should be about a 30 millimeter sculpture, something to fit either tabletop role-playing games or uh, like D&D, &D, or it should fit a... Um, it, it should fit a... Uh, you know, a, a Christmas display village. Um, originally, I was going to have him dueling with the uh, the Mouse King from the Nutcracker, and I, I never I never saw that project to its fruition. Just be, I just sort of lost interest in it. But I, I really think that I I may end up sculpting that eventually, and then and then these two will be able to face off. Um, so yeah, a lot of the details came through buttons on the boots and. Um, you know, the belt and the, the fancy double-breasted jacket and the, the sort of shoulder pads and all those things. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. And Sculpt GL is great. You get really great resolution and um, 
And one thing that I'm curious about topology-wise is if I were to subdivide this again, so I just clicked subdivide and I'm curious. So that, that just made all the polygons double. Yeah, that's smoother. That is, yeah, you can see a real difference there. Look, here all there as opposed to that. You see that? A slight difference, a slight difference. Anyway, this, this is finished now. So let's see, um, out of 99 photos of this piece, it took all 99 photos. Um, so back to scanning the, the bow and arrow. So it took all 99 photos um, and scanned them all, turned them into a, a point cloud. So this is really cool. This is a visualization, an actual 3D space of the, I used two perspectives for this sculpture of all of the photographs that I took, which are all used. If you zoom into one and you click on it, you can actually see that picture and how that window lines up towards the object. I find this fascinating. You see that? And then once you move away, you see that sparse point cloud. So that's, that's pretty good. Getting 99 out of 100 should give me a very high fidelity uh, object when we're finished. So now we'll go to workflow. The next thing that you want to do I, uh, it used to be that all these things would be one at a time. Now you got to go into the advanced tab in order to do it. So the next thing is the dense point cloud generation. This is the sparse point cloud. So with a dense point cloud, we want all cameras. We're going to go to next. The reason why you can deselect certain cameras is that if you use this program, and you can because it's photogrammetry too, archaeologists use this, for example, and they'll take a crap load of pictures of the ground from a certain perspective or many perspectives and then some of them don't have the objects in the picture that they actually want to scan so they'll deselect certain cameras in order to narrow the focus for us we're doing this on a turntable we're masking all these images so we don't need to deselect cameras what's in the cameras if we masked it properly should be our object so again we're going to go to general um, we're going to go to, we'll, we'll use default because we have so many cameras, we, we should be good in what we get. And we'll see, we'll see how it comes out. Um, so this says it's gonna take 21 minutes. Um, it probably won't take 21 minutes. Um, but we'll keep an eye on it. In the meanwhile, we'll go back over here into Sculpt GL, and we'll uh, we'll fool around. I think I think it makes sense. So this is this is done. This is something that I will 3D print um, in the next week or so for sure at different sizes um, to sort of really examine it in close range. But but um, what I'd like to do actually is. Clear this scene, and we are going to mess around with something that I've been fooling around with, which is um, I'd never done this before about a day or two ago where I actually sculpted a stock human head. Um, and this is, you know, I put maybe 15, 20 minutes work into this, and it started to come out somewhat okay, you know. Um, there's a lot of features on here that are a lot like ZBrush from what I understand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just, while we're waiting for um, our little hunter archer object to process, um, we'll just, you know, I'll do a sketch. So, or I'll continue this sketch and, and push it for a little while. So I, I think that's, that's cool. And in the end, maybe this will be something that I can use um, moving forward. One thing that I wanna do, which is a really neat trick is first thing I'll turn on um, dynamic typology this way dynamic topology excuse me um, and I'll set it to 42 maybe a little lower maybe 37 so that way as we're sculpting the polygon count the the amount of um, the size of the sculpture in terms of uh, space it takes up will actually increase 
so that way the resolution increases rather than you start to get stretched out polygons that look really blocky, really PlayStation 1-ish. Um, I'm gonna go into masking now. And what I'm gonna do is, and symmetry is on. So I've sculpted this whole head with symmetry on. So that way that's why like, if it looks like, wow, like he looks symmetrical, it's because whatever I do to one side is happening exactly on the other side. So there's, there's no way to do this in a way that's asymmetrical. So if I'm touching one ear, the other ear is the same. So let's go over here and let's mask these pupils and let's bring them out. I want, I, first of all, I want the eyes to be a little bit more three-dimensional and then I want a little more bulbous and three-dimensional. And then after that, I want the pupils to be even more so. So the first thing we'll do is we'll select all of this together, including the pupil. And and in there. Okay, now um, I believe you hold control and click twice. Oh. Nope, come on now. Okay, so now this is what we did when I pressed control and clicked outside the piece, um, it inversed it. So now what we would be controlling is everything but the mask. So we'll go now to the drag option, make our tool very wide, go to the middle of the eyeball and we'll extrude that out a little bit. Okay. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to um, reverse it again, go to the mask again We are now going to hold down Alt and deselect everything but the pupils, and then we're gonna bring those out even more so. Something that I thought of doing after I turned this off the last time. Okay, so now we will click out of this again, because right now it looks like he has very poofy eyes. Now we'll go to the drag. <laughs> that might be a little too much. Actually, that's not, it's not terrible. I'm gonna go in and smooth Yeah, I'm going to oh. I'm gonna go in now. What did I just do? Okay, um, masking. Yeah, this just needs to be smoothed out now. So I'll go in here and Just kind of make these surfaces a little bit more smooth. And then we'll go in there with the crease tool and, and redo the the original eyelid lines that were in there. But I, you know, I, I just didn't want uh, didn't want things to get too crazy. Okay, so now we'll go in there with the crease and we'll kind of reduce the intensity a little bit. I want it to start here. Now we're going to change to a brush. And 
and we're just going to and in some eyeballs he looks gaunt that's the thing right he's all cheekbone so I'm just gonna quickly move to a crease Okay, go back to brush. That's a little too much. That's a little too much. <laughs> he uh, he looks very relaxed. Uh, drag. He looks a little too relaxed. You know what I want is we got to give this poor guy some cheeks. He's so gaunt. Okay. There we go. His face a little more full. He's got some basic detail. Um, we give him hair. We give him some hair. I don't know if I want to give him hair though. What if I decide to use to use this for something, I mean, uh, for, you know, to use him for a project. One thing we could also do is local scale. I feel like his eyes might be a little too big now. So go to local scale and shrink them a little bit. And then go to the move. I feel like they might be a little too, little. his eyes might be a little too far apart. So we'll go to the move tool and they were here. Yeah, let's just drop them in a little. Let's see what we did. Yeah, they were there looking a little reptilian. And that looks a little more natural to me. You can even narrow the nose slightly. Yeah, it looks pretty good. That looks pretty, 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 pretty good. Um. So now that we have this, let's, uh, yeah, I'm thinking I'll save this and, and maybe I'll do another, another one live right now because we're still waiting for processing. So let me, um, Let me save this. Maybe we, uh, maybe we do another head. I feel like I could use the practice. Um, so yeah, let's do it. Okay, scene. 
add sphere. Now I'm going to reduce the polygons by a bit. Okay. And I will activate quads. And then we will go into drag. Symmetry will keep on. And we'll just, you know, I actually want to kind of shrink this down. When I get too close to the grid here, I get like worried. Worried. So, and by the way, we're, oh, we're nearly there. Okay. This is finalizing. So, let's see where we're at. And then the next time we have something to process, we'll go back into a sketch and just kind of go from there. All right. Okay, the dense point cloud has just come in. And <laughs> I'm always like, look how good that looks. Very happy with this. Very, very happy with this. Um, there's nothing really for me to do. I don't see anything that seems off or any points that really seem like they need to be deleted right now, today, in this moment. So let's see if we can get together a mesh. All cameras. General default seems to be serving us well thus far. We'll run it and we'll go back to our sketch here. So I'm going to drag this and uh, top of the head, raise that a little. Back of the head, we'll bring that back. Chin, bring that down. Now start laying in some, some eyes for the lines, just with a brush, and about halfway down here. That is too big and not intense enough, so way too in way too big still. Where our nose will go. Our mouth will go. Come back to drag. Bring the cranium up a bit. Bring the forehead out a bit. Definitely going to widen that just a little. I'm thinking about doing a female head here as best that I can manage. Um, drag, maybe bring the eyes up, down slightly. Okay, brush tool here. Bring this all the way up. Oh, that is too wide, what I'm aiming for. Okay, and we can just sort of drag out the nose to where we want it. Too many bumps for my taste, so I 
just kind of smooth that out. That's better. Okay, so I want to drag out some lips. And then a chin. Okay, we're whoa, whoa. <laughs> Okay, yeah, we're we're getting there. Certainly getting there. Okay, let's check back over here. It's finalizing our mesh. Uh, let's mess with this for just a couple more minutes. Getting a little carried away. We're going to go back to drag. This is cool. One one cool thing here is that, all right, I know where my nostrils should be. And there they are. Maybe they should be a little bigger. Okay. All right, I see our mesh is finalized. I am very interested. So we'll come back to her in a couple of minutes. But we're starting to already get this, the features that we want in there, in there. Um, So all right, we'll come back in two minutes, but here we are. So our mesh is here. That looks not terrible. This is what we got. This is our low polygon mesh. That's totally hollow, by the way, because we didn't take pictures of the base. So that's something we can fix. So here's what I'm thinking, right? What I'm thinking is this bow looks usable. The hand looks usable. Um, even though it's in two pieces, I'm going to go over it with something later. So that's fine. Um, the elbow should be touching the, the bottom there, so that's okay. Um, these arrows here are not good. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a trick. A couple of editing tricks for this process is, um, first, to really know what we're looking at with the polygon. See, it's using different color tones here, but that's because it's trying to take into account if this was colored in a certain way or painted, or if it was a tree, it would be green and brown, but it was clay. So that's actually representing shadow there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the light. I'm going to make everything white. And now we see what our polygon really is. So this is really what we're looking at. Now this is fine. I mean, it's not a lot of detail, but as you can see, you throw it into Sculpt GL and you can get a lot of detail out of it, or at least I plan to and will. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do, just to make my life easier, is because I know that I'm going to re-sculpt these completely and I need separation here between these two arrows. I might even want multiple arrows. I might want her quiver to have 
six arrows or something like that, or four. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Tools, Select, Manual Selection. I'm going to go to Poly, and I'm just going to draw a polygon, like a lasso tool around all this stuff, and press the Delete button. Gone. Look around here, and we're good. They're gone. No harm, no foul. I'm going to go back into it manually. I'm going to select these. I'm going to delete them too. So this way we'll be able to smooth it out, really detail up the quiver. And then the next thing... I want to do before our final step because this is good this is this is usable this is what we were looking for i'm going to go to tools mesh filters fill holes selective and it's going to show me the holes in the mesh right so select by size there should be only one hole this one on the bottom now you can't 3d print something that's not if it's got holes in it I mean you could but I mean and people do print hollow stuff but it's hollow with that's done in slicing later so you want your object to be a solid object for now so let's make it that let's fill selected okay close let's just double check our work selection uh, I'm sorry uh, mesh filters fill holes no holes found in the selected mesh so that's good news so now this is a this is a solid everything that we wanted in there is in there we have one more step to do and that is to workflow advanced um, textured mesh generation we might get better details based on the camera so let's go in here again and use these and just see if we can somehow get more detailed mesh might be better might be worse we'll pick of the two meshes we'll pick the one that is uh, better higher fidelity it, it, it might be the, the one we just got um, it might be this newer version and that's the one we'll export as an STL or an OBJ and then we will uh, we can 3d sculpt with that so uh, back back to her by the way so in fact yeah, so let's let's um, let's uh, let's do what we're doing here. So I'm going to go back to drag. I'm going to let's make our eye cavities by pushing in here. Too small. Still too small. That's, that's okay. Go to brush here, turn on negative, and just sort of eat away in here a little. There's a couple of ways that I've seen people sculpt eyes. One of them is you get your eye cavity, and then um, you can get your eye cavity. This is kind of strange. I've done it a couple of times. I don't know if I'm a fan yet. And then you can just sort of use the brush tool and put in the shape of a ball and then sculpt an eyelid over it. Another way is you can add a perfect sphere in each cavity and sculpt the eyelids by building it around it. I don't know which is better. It depends what you're looking for. I could show you how to do it quick. I learned it in a YouTube video recently. Um, but before we do that, let's first make this nose just slightly more realistic. And 
let's let's extrude the lips let's let's do that yeah let's do that just because I'd like them to be roughed in so I'm gonna mask from this area here and there and then control um, drag make the drag big Use the mask and turn this off. Um, we're going to just smooth that out a little bit. Smooth out there. We're going to we're going to give her a little more cheek. But before we do that, let's just before I forget here. This just needs to come out just a little bit just a little yeah just that much okay now like you could you could see this this is starting to come together um okay so let's go to now crease negative on put that line in there ah man This has some problems. This has some problems. Just use local scale to make the lips bigger. But now they don't look right. Um, smooth them out a little. We go to the brush and oh that's still negative turn off the negative and make this a little smaller and just let's build a lip out brush a little bit bigger no she's got three lips too many lips too many lips. A little more in the cheek. Yeah, we lost a little something there. Um, let's drag. No, oof.
Oh boy. No. Well, there's, there's the issue here, is that, that, uh, that mouth, see that, that's too extreme. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's not smooth, but, just turn this up a little bit. Okay, now the other thing that makes sense to do something going on here and it may be that I haven't given her a chin could be that I'm giving her too much of a chin okay um, We'll get figured out. There's something there. There's also something that's not quite right. And the last thing that I need to do is sort of decrease. That there. There we go. Boy, that took a while, huh? Now put the positive back on it. And build the upper lip up a little. There we go. There we go. You know, it's, it's still a little counterintuitive for me, you know, uh, to have to think all right, well, in real life, what I would need to do here is add clay. And when you're working digitally, it just doesn't feel that way sometimes. And so, I end up getting a little bit jammed up from time to time. Yeah, see, even this is a little bit like it needs uh, to get smoothed out slightly, and I would actually like to drag this higher uh, to a little bit more of a point. Oh.
Yeah, that, that feels more natural. That feels more natural. But uh, we'll work on it a little bit more in a minute. So we have here our finished polygon. This is the textured mesh. It doesn't look bad. It doesn't look terrible. So I think this will be the one. Yeah, I'll take the textured one. And I'll export it. And that's kind of the process. So it's that, but it's, um, you know, about uh, seven other, <laughs> about seven other of these. Um, bu -bu -bu. Um, Hunter Woman. Okay. know what else um, I'd like to do is mask here and just sort of create a neck Oh my goodness, I forgot to deselect this.
Um, okay, so let me just save this for a second and just show you what we completed. So that's what we just 3D scanned and masked. Um, now I can actually move her a bit this way. And, and one of the neat tricks um, in general is that we can also, like say I work on a head separately, we can also Throw this head in here, shrink it down. I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I know that this is not up to snuff yet in order to do that. But um, that's something you could do, something that I actually have done before. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. Um, I, I likely won't use this this exact sketch on this, but I, I think that's, you know, it's worth, it's worth showing you for sure. Um, so yeah. We, uh, we went from physical object to, get rid of this, went from a physical object to a bunch of pictures that were then masked, and now we have this, which, you know, just needs detail work and cleaning up, and then it's ready to be 3D printed. It's, it's a solid object, so, you know, can totally be done. Um, yeah, so, anyway, this was, this was fun to, to stream for the first time time in a long time and just just do some stuff um, and uh, you know I, I think I might um, might keep going just for a little while longer um, yeah
move this out a bit. Okay. Let's put in some ears. <laughs> um, okay, same deal here. Um, okay, we're gonna just... Oh, way too big, okay. We are going to paint in where the ears should go, just sort of a general ear shape. And the ear should be kind of halfway between the whole head and that looks pretty good. Click out of it, drag, and then this should be the, oh, um, Okay, now this should be the easiest way to extrude the ears. Yeah, there you go. That that should give us some some ears. Um, One other thing I want to do is I want to flatten this under jowl area. Now, I might have just done it a little bit too much. So. Yeah, that's too much. Also, um, local scale. Shrink that nose a little bit.
Okay, let's get some eyeballs in there. Um, yeah, I'm going to do it the way that I mentioned earlier, which is just sort of certainly need less. Uh, so we just sort of gently. that in there. Then kind of drag out. Right there, you see that? Um, Even just put them just a little bit less bulgy. Good. And now, uh, crease. turn symmetry off here uh, for a second and just sort of <clears throat> have that pupil reflection point on the same side. Hmm, not crazy about it. Not crazy about it. Now, I, I know she looks really um, elf-ish right now, and that is not my intention. <laughs> that was supposed to be symmetrical. I forgot I did not turn it off. Yeah, so you see that right there? Oh, man. Go back. It's fun to play with this man in a way that I really can't say enough.
Okay. Let's go back in here. Let's smooth this out so we don't have bags under the eyes. Let's drag. Oh, can like I twist that? Let's see if I can twist this. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, that's, that's going to be fine, that's going to be fine. Okay, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. let's go here, let's go to drag, let's just narrow the cranium a little bit. Okay, widen the neck slightly. Go into crease. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, now we're going to flatten out the ears. We'll crease into them a bit around the back.
Okay. Now let's, um, kind of liking this, but, um, let's play with some stuff and see what we can get. Proportionally, we can stretch things out a little, we can narrow them. We can do a lot of stuff. Now, one other thing that could be fun to do is just to sort of play with hair textures. It's food for thought, that's for sure. Certainly made some improvements. I'm gonna leave bald cap setting on, kinda, sorta. Um, ah, oh crap, can't undo past that point. Okay, um, turn this back on. We'll go smooth. Just smooth those things out. We'll go to flatten. That's probably Yeah, I'd say that's about right. Anyway, I think that this has been a pretty cool stream. Um, and I think with that, I'm just gonna, uh, I'm gonna call quits for tonight. And um, I think maybe next time we'll do something interesting with either this head or something else. But I, I, I could play with this all day long, really, you know.
anyway, um, thanks. Appreciate it. This was this was a whole lot of fun. Um, it's nice to uh, to take the pressure off and not not feel like uh, not feel like I have to speak at all times. So, thanks for coming by and checking this out. I really do appreciate it. I am trying to drag myself away from this from this piece. So, thanks again.